Vegas to kick things off. Um, updates on Drysdale and Coots. Are they going to play tonight? Uh, you know, I don't know how it all started that I give you lineups in the morning. I'll give you the goalie. Okay. The goalie's Urson. And then you guys have to wait for the lineup. I don't know how that all started, me giving you the whole full lineup in the morning. Are you able but to tell us about, you know, if Jamie's feeling better? Or Jamie's feeling better. I'm, I'm not sure what the lineup is. So, yeah. I don't know how you conned me into that for a few days, but that's out the I window. appreciated it for three months. <laughs> yes. Um, he, Morgan Frost looks like he's been a little bit more effective lately. Do you feel like he, what, what has he been doing better maybe over the last I, I, Well, I'll, I'll just go the last game. I, I, he created uh, he created a lot of offense, made a lot of plays, uh, and I think he's been more consistent that way as far as creating offense. and. Um, yeah, and that, and that's uh, we talked about him. I'm not sure when you guys asked me. Um, he, he needs to play away from the puck, but the biggest thing is I want him to create offense. And I think the last little while he's been more consistent that way. You've got, you know, obviously we don't know if Sean's playing tonight, Val, but you've got some centers. You've got Noah back now. Is there tough you know, decisions? No, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I guess Noah played on the wing a little bit before, yeah. but he looked good in the last game too. I thought. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. Just, yeah, we're gonna we'll sit down and talk this morning. And uh, tough decisions, I guess so, because I never like sitting anybody out. I think everybody's contributed, um, but they're decisions that we just have to make. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see where we go. I, I don't know. I just don't know how it shakes out here. I want to see how the morning skate goes, and then we'll make our decisions from there. Given the you know, the sheer number of guys you guys have now, the number of quality players you guys have both up front and on the back end. The way you've kind of done it this year has always been, you know, you play the guys who are playing better. But given the amount of, I guess, rotations, for lack of a better term, that you guys have in terms of making sure everybody can play, are there situations you can envision where you, know, you go to a guy and you basically say, you've been fine, but like I need to get Mark Stahl in because he hasn't played in two weeks, things like that? No. Nah. No, I, I, I know I'm going to go to a couple of players that uh, probably played pretty good the last game and will sit out tonight. But it, it's not to get a rotation. It, it's, it's where you sit in the lineup, what role you play in the lineup, special teams. All, all that comes into play in, in putting your lineup out there. But it, it, isn't to, it isn't to force a guy to get in there. Uh, yeah. So, but it, it decisions are made on on uh, your top six forward, your penalty killer. Do you do this, that, that? Sometimes that comes into play, but not not on. God, I got to get you in there. I'm going to take this guy out. He's playing really good, but I got to take him out just to get you in there. It's not going to be done that way. No. John, with uh, Owen Tippett, when when he's going right, when he's on, and it seems like he's taking the puck to the net. How, how high do you think his ceiling is? Like, yeah. I feel like we're starting to see it a little bit. Well, the thing that was encouraging in the last game is I think he had, if I remember correctly, 10 shots and only one missed the net, where usually it's a bunch missing the net. Um, just an unbelievable goal to, to win the game for us there, to put us in the lead. He has a chance. Man, I don't know where it goes. He has an opportunity to be a, a really good player in this league. And, uh, we're, we're trying to, he, he kind of, he's kind of all over the place away from the puck. Uh, and I try to balance that in teaching him that part of the game without getting in his way offensively because he's so dangerous. So we're just trying to, I think, spoon feed him a little bit as far as some stuff away from the puck because he shows up on both ledgers. And uh, we're hopefully trying to get some of that off of this ledger and maybe we'll add to that ledger. Uh, but he, he has a chance. I, I, the limit there, I have no idea where it goes. It, it, he could be a really good player. Last year he said uh, he had no problem like listening to the coaches. He's like, I can oh. just do what I'm told. How receptive is oh, he? He's, to he, he's a terrific kid, very coachable. All those guys are. We, we don't have problems with that. There may be, uh, may, there may be heated conversations and, and them trying to get their point across, which I, what I, which I want to happen. Um, but that, that's a good room. Uh, that, that is a good room no matter if they're – like there's going to be a couple of pe people aggravated tonight that are playing, but they're still very coachable. With, with Owen Tippett, he's one of the guys that um, the 
he's like number four or something in this draft. In the league. Is he? Yeah, how do you correct that? The only way I know how to correct it is tell him. Uh, and, I, and Angelo is doing a lot of work with him on the ice. Um, changed his stick uh, a, a little bit. Uh, um, yeah, I'm constantly in his ear. Um, yeah, in fact, he, when he scored, I'm not going to tell you what he said. He leaned over and said something to me after he scored. But I know, I know the amount of emphasis we're putting on him on how many goals he could have right now. Uh, I think it's resonating with him. So I think he's concentrating on it. So that's all you can do. You can show him tape. I think Angel is doing a terrific job with some of our guys and, uh, and some of that stuff, their feet, all the things that go on with a skills coach. Uh, it certainly worked the other night because he only missed the net once. I think he had 11 shot attempts. He told us a few minutes ago that Sam Harrison is getting the start. I think, if I, if I remember correctly, since Carter's come back from his illness, Carter's got seven starts. This would be six for, for Sam. I think everyone would agree that Carter's been good this year. He's yeah. had a good season. But has Sam played so well that this is pretty close to like a 50-50 timeshare at this point? Well, it's the month of January, too. We, we had talked about this, the amount of games we play, uh, the amount of travel we've gone through comes into play. But uh, Sam, Sam definitely has earned the trust of the coaching staff. And, and I, it's, not, it's not subplanting Carter or anything like that. It's just Sam, Sam's earned our trust. So it makes it easier decisions, especially when you're – you're worried about how much we, I think we play six and nine nights here coming up. After all the travel back and forth east-west the first few months here, uh, Carter's been really good. Sam has been really good. Uh, it's, a, it's a big reason why we're, uh, where we're at right now as far as wins and losses. So, so they both deserve the net. So Sam gets it tonight. I have no idea. I don't have no idea how the other coaches feel. I, I, I remember back in the day, and it's changed in playoffs too dramatically. I mean, back in the day in playoffs, I think Bush can lend some thoughts to it too. You had your number one guy in playoffs, and very rarely did you ever change. Now it's like it's you're going to change in the middle of the game sometimes in a playoff game. How other coaches feel about it, I have no idea. I certainly, it's not a. I don't go 1A, 1B. I don't even think that deep enough. I talk to Dilly uh, each and every day. We talked in the plane after the game. Uh, who, who's going to go so they could know, because I knew I was going to give them a couple of days off. We just go it day by day. And uh, we've been very fortunate that we've had uh, two guys be, they're, they're our most consistent players this year, is, has been our goaltending. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to have conversations with your goalie and decide where we're going to go with it. Ago and looked at, I know he's a legend, but Marty Berdour, you know, he had a season where he played 78 games. He had like 10 straight years where he played over 70. Why do you think <coughs> that isn't a thing anymore where goalies have that big of a work? It's like the pitch count, right? It, I, I think we talk our athletes into being tired. I, I think we have so many damn numbers. And just to trying to focus, I, I think we talk athletes into being tired. Um, I think they're, I look at the other way. I, I like to try to push athletes and to figure out a way just to get it done. And, and that's how you develop skin. That's how you develop a mental toughness. I think we're almost trying to talk them, uh, talk them away from just getting through it. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's right now uh, to be playing 70-plus games in the National Hockey League. Uh, but now I think the number, what is it, Boosh, 55, 58? It went from playing – to, I think, 65. Now it's down another 10. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 do, I do think the numbers, uh, I think it has an effect on the mind. And I like to go the other way.